Good morning students. Our lecture today is part 2 of odontogenic tumors. A quick refreshment for the previous lecture. Odontogenic tumors, uh, they are uh, tumors uh, of the jaw and overlying soft tissue. They are derived from epithelial or ectomizakimal remnants of the germ. They are classified into benign and malignant tumors. So, in the previous lectures, we know the classification of benign odontogenic tumors according to their tissue origin. They are classified into epithelial odontogenic tumors. Mainly, they originate from epithelial component, uh, mixed epithelial and uh, ectomesenchymal odontogenic tumors, and purely ectomesenchymal, even with the uh, presence of epithelium, but this epithelium have no role in the patho pathogenesis. Uh, in the previous lecture, we discussed the epithelial odontogenic tumors in full details. Uh, in today's lecture, we will discuss uh, the remaining uh, division. The first tumor in the category of mixed odontogenic tumors is amyloblastic fibroma. Amyloblastic fibroma considered as a true tumor in which both the epithelial and the mesenchymal component have neoplastic properties. It occurs in young patients in the first two decades of life with a slight female predilection. It is mostly located in the posterior region of the mandible, often associated with an erupted tooth as we see here. This is a radiograph of a young patient. Oh, I know young because there are uh, there are the permanent and there are the deciduous teeth. Uh, teeth is still not shedding. And this is the amyloplastic fibroma associated with an uninterrupted lower seven. Clinically, smaller tumors are asymptomatic, but when the tumors uh, get larger, they have uh, they can produce a significant swelling of the jaw. Radiographically, as it appears here, it appears as a well circumscribed radio lucency. It's either unilocular or multilocular, with a sclerotic border. This is the sclerotic border, a white border, a white radioopic border. The treatment for this type of a tumor is by inoculation and curettage. Although recurrence is rare under the circumstances, resection is only reserved for recurrent region, lesions. So, the first line of a treatment for this lesion I will do inoculation and the curettage and uh, keep the patient under observation. If there is any recurrence, then we will uh, res uh, we will do a more aggressive treatment, which is resection. Uh, why we leave the resection in the cases of recurrence? Because uh, it is shown that about uh, forty five percent of amyloblastic fibrosarcoma develop in the setting of recurrent. Amyloblastic fibroma. The second mixed odontogenic tumors are odontoma. Uh, they are the most frequently occurring odontogenic tumors with a prevalence exceeding all other odontogenic tumors combined. These lesions, the odontoma, uh, generally well accepted as uh, ahamartomas. What do we mean by a hamartoma? They are tumor-like overgrowth of tissue that histologically appears mature and it is native to the area. Like in, uh, in this case, we see here a collection of uh, dentine and uh, enamel, which is normal to found in the mouth, but they are overgrowth, irregular overgrowth. The odontoma usually uh, have two divisions or two, sub two subtypes. The compound odontoma 
in which we see multiple small tooth-like structure. While in case like we see here, multiple tooth-like structures. While in complex odontoma, it appear as irregular masses of dentin and enamel with no atomic and with no anatomic resemblance of tooth. The compound odontoma are slightly more common than complex odontoma. They can occur at any age, typically diagnosed under, uh, in the second decade of life, usually seen more often in females than males. Compound odontomas are predominantly seen in the anterior maxilla, whereas complex odontoma are seen in the posterior mandible or maxilla. In here, in this case, it appears in the posterior area of the mandible. Clinically, they appear as asymptomatic but usually have some signs and symptoms, which may include association with unerupted or impacted teeth, retained deciduous teeth, swelling, displacement of teeth, and malocclusion. In the X-ray, compound odontoma appears as well-organized, malformed tooth or tooth-like structures or denticles of varying sizes and shapes surrounded by a narrow radiolucent zone, whereas the complex odontoma appear as irregular mass of calcified material surrounded by a narrow radiolucent band with a smooth outer periphery. The treatment for odontoma usually treated by simple inoculation and cure touch with no, uh, with no uh, recurrence uh, reported. The third type of mixed odontogenic tumors is the primordial odontogenic tumor. The mean age of the affected patient is usually uh, 11 years, ranging between two, the range of age between 2 and uh, 19, so usually occur in patients in young age with a slight mere predominance, usually located in the posterior maxilla, sorry, posterior mandible, like we see here. And the main, uh, this is the main location. Uh, the patient clinically showed asymptomatic bone swelling, like we see here. This is the swelling, it appeared in the CT. This is the swelling, lingual swelling, with thinning of the bone. Usually we have some perforation. So, uh, return to the clinical manifestation, usually asymptomatic bone swelling can produce root resorption, as we see here, root resorption and buccal or lingual, the, in, in, in this case we have lingual cortical expansion. In the x-ray, it appears as well-defined unilocular or multilocular, here in this case we have a well-defined unilocular radiolucency adjacent to the crown, associated with the crown of an erupted tooth. The treatment for primordial odontogenic tumor is simple inoculation without recurrence. The fourth, the fourth mix odontogenic tumors is a dentigenic, dentinogenic gosella tumor. It is a rare tumorous form of uh, calcifying odontogenic cyst. Only small uh, number of cases have been reported. It is locally invasive neoplasm characterized by the presence of gut cell. Uh, during histopathological examination, these gut cell will appear as cells that lost uh, their nuclei with the preservation of their basic cellular outline and have the resistance to degeneration. Usually, the average age is 50. The range is from 17 to 72 with a slight male predilection. Uh, it occurs in the maxilla and in the mandible with equal frequency, but usually seen uh, in the area of canine of first molar, 
here we see th see this lesion in the area of canine clinically it appear as a painless bony mass but usually uh, the patient may complain from pain and discomfort radiographically they appear as a radiolucent mass with a scattered calcification as we see here sometimes associated with impacted teeth here we see this is the canine and this is the first premolar this is the C and D not shed yet and usually uh, there is a resorption of the teeth sorry resorption of the root associated in the area of the tumor the treatment for this tumor is surgical excision because it is locally uh, locally invasive so uh, the treatment is surgical excision with wide histological margin at least 1 cm uh, is advocated the final subcategory of benign odontogenic tumors is tumors derived from odontogenic ectomies and kind. The first type is odontogenic fibroma. It is an air neoplasm of mature fibrous connective tissue with variable amount of inactive looking odontogenic epithelium with or without evidence of calcification. Uh, we have two types of odontogenic fibroma, either peripheral, according to the location, either peripheral occur in the soft tissue outside the bone, or central or intraosseous occur inside the bone. Um, the diagnosis occur at any age with the peak in the third and fourth decade of life usually with a slight male uh, female predilection the most common site for peripheral uh, type is the canine premolar area in the mandible or maxilla this is the most common location of the peripheral type while the most common site for the central type are the mandibular premolar moral, moral, molar area or the maxillary canine and the premolar area as we see here in the peripheral type clinically it appear as ele elevated exophytic lesion while the central type uh, usually uh, it is um, intraosseous uh, but sometimes we see swelling uh, large swelling as we see here as a peripheral expansion due to the central lesion radiographically in the peripheral type we see no radiograph because as I said, said it, uh, it is um, uh, not from the bone it occurs in the soft tissue of the gum while in the central type, it is manifested as unilocular or multilocular. This is the clinical case. This is the, radio the radiological x-ray for this case. As we see here, it's not uh, so apparent. Uh, a unilocular, worse than circumscribed radiolucency. This is the lesion superimposed. The treatment is inoculation and curettage. No radical. Uh, the other type of odontogenic ectomies and chymal tumors is the odontogenic myxoma. They are uncommon benign neoplasm of the jaws and derived from the mesenchymal portion of the tooth germ. These tumors are slowly growing with the potential for aggressive behavior and high recurrence rate. It occurs 
uh, in the second or third decade of life with a slight female predilection. The location usually the mandible is more commonly involved than, than the maxilla. The posterior mandible is the, monk, the most common site as we see here in this case. Clinically, it appears as a slowly growing expensile painless tumor. What does I mean by expensile? Expensile means able to expand. The, sorry, the bone is expanded. So, clinically appear as a slow growing expensile painless tumor, which may cause tooth resorption, as we see here, root resorption, some beginning of root resorption, or uh, tooth mobility, also we see. Um, bone expansion as we said before cortical destruction and facial distortion like we see here we have cortical destruction and perforation so this is the tumor is expanded and perforated the lower border of the mandible in the radiograph the classical presentation of this tumor is multilocular radiolucency as we see here it appear as multilocular not a single area of radiolucency but multiple areas of radiolucencies with areas of radio opacities this is the term this is the meaning of term multilocular with well developed loculi as we said this is all loculis this is our trabeculi trabeculis of bone with and these are loculis of soft tissue between them uh, uh, these are uh, these trabeculis arranged at a right angle they are called they we have uh, a term uh, in the radiograph when we see here uh, they are appear as a tennis racket شوفوا شلون مشبكة مثل مضرب التنس or a step ladder مثل الدرج شلون هذا الدرج نسأت على للدرج it may cause displacement and uh, uh, root resorption as we said the treatment for this case uh, for in the cases of odontogenic myxoma uh, they should be treated with the resection with one centimeter uh, of bony linear margin these tumors are not encapsulated as we see here there is no defined border for this lesion so they are tend to perforate and infiltrate the surrounding bone complete removal with a curettage is usually uh, is nearly impossible so resection of the tumor with normal surrounding margin of the bone and soft tissue uh, that shows negative margin should be uh, the treatment of choice. The other type of tumors of odontogenic ectomies and chymal origin is the cementoblastoma. It is relatively a rare odontogenic uh, neoplasm of the jaw. Uh, it is uh, the only two, two uh, neoplasm of cementum origin with a prevalence of about 1 to 6.2 percent. There is usually a predominance in young individual, usually below 30, with no sex predilection, usually located in the mandible, more than the maxilla, and uh, associated with erupted tooth, as we see here. Uh, what are the clinical manifestations? The patient usually complain from pain and the swelling, but sometimes may be asymptomatic. We can discover it during routine uh, x-ray. It may also cause uh, jaw deformity and displacement of the adjacent teeth. In the radiograph, it appears as a radioopic mass fused with the root or roots of permanent teeth this is the radioopic mass we see here it is clearly associated or attached with the root of the tooth 
they are usually surrounded by a radiolucent rim this is so clear a radiolucent rim this is encapsulation this is a capsule around this calcified cementum containing lesion its relation with the root uh, has nearly become the pathognomic feature of the lesion when we see a radioopic mass with a radiolucent rim associated with an erupted tooth usually the first uh, diagnosis we have in mind is cementoblastoma also even this is not clear like this picture but we see here the radioopic mass with clearly a well defined radiolucent rim around it the treatment usually complete surgical removal of the lesion with the extraction of the tooth we cannot remove the lesion without tooth extraction so the treatment is removal of the lesion with extraction of the involved tooth or teeth then followed by thorough curettage as we sell the curettage i bring the curate or the bear and take about one to two millimeter from the bone are all around the previous mass cementoblastoma have a good prognosis but in cases of incomplete removal recurrence may happen uh, the final type of odontogenic tumors uh, that have an ectomies and chymal origin is the cemento ossifying fibroma. They are a benign tumor considered to originate from the periodontal ligament. It, consisting, it consists of a fibrous tissue uh, containing varying amount of uh, mineralized material resembling bone or cementum. They are usually more seen in female in the fourth decade of life, mostly located in the mandible, as we see here, mostly located in the mandible. Usually, uh, they have no symptoms. The patient complains from the no symptoms. They are a slowly growing lesion. But usually, if left untreated, they may cause deformity. In the radiograph, we see them as a well demarcated unilocular well demarcated unilocular lesion with variable amount of radio opacities the treatment because this lesion have a good delimination so excision with curettage is the treatment of choice Malignant odontogenic tumors are very rare, usually constitute about less than 10% of the total odontogenic tumors. They arise from the epithelial component of the odontogenic apparatus. The precursor cells for malignant transformation usually the rest of molasses, reduced enamel epithelium surrounding the crown of an impacted tooth, rest of series found in the gingiva, or the lining of odontogenic cysts. Behaviorally, all these tumors has the potential for either regional nodal or distant metastasis. So that, that is why we call them malignant. They have the potential for invading the uh, regional lymph node or have the potential for distant metastasis. The first type of Malignant odontogenic tumors is the odontogenic carcinomas. These tumors believe uh, to take origin from the epithelial component of the odontogenic apparatus. The term carcinoma usually uh, linked with the term epithelium. So when I tell you this, uh, this tumor is called carcinoma, you have in mind uh, the original or the origin of uh, this carcinoma is the epithelial tissue uh, 
Like we said before, uh, the seer rest uh, of molasses reduced immunomal epithelium rest of series. The lining of odontogenic cysts uh, uh, represent uh, the precursor cells for uh, odontogenic carcinoma. These regions usually locally aggressive. So, uh, the main treatment for these regions, as we said uh, in the previous lectures, the radical uh, surgery or radical resection usually reserved for malignant tumors. The first type of odontogenic carcinoma, we have the amyloblastic carcinoma. Uh, the amyloblastic carcinoma is a rare malignant uh, epithelial odontogenic tumors with histological features resembling the amyloblastoma but have a malignant cytological features regardless of the presence or absence of metastasis. So we have amyloblastoma but with uh, cytological features of malignancy. The cells have uh, like uh, uh, metast rapid metastasis, deformed cells, multiple nuclei, all these uh, malignant features of the cells. Even if we don't have any metastasis, then uh, they can de develop de novo when we say the term de novo, which means uh, without any previous tumor or previous. Uh, uh, lesion present in the area they appear uh, suddenly or they can develop uh, secondarily from an initially benign amyloblastoma that loses differentiation and became a sarcoma so this is what, uh, one of the reasons why amyloblastoma uh, is uh, considered dangerous and we should treat it with uh, aggressive treatment because of uh, its ability to transform to amyloblastic carcinoma. Usually seen in elderly, both gender equally uh, affected. Usually uh, the posterior mandible is the most common area like we see here. Slight swelling. Clinically, they grow more rapidly and aggressively and can present, uh, presents as a painful swelling that perforate the cortical bone. Like we see here, this is we have a thin bone. If we leave it anymore, if we try to extract any teeth, this thin bone will fracture and we have perforation. In the radiograph, Usually, it is an ill-defined radiolucency. With thin cortex or sometimes perforated cortex. The treatment usually uh, include combination of surgical resection and neck dissection and radiotherapy. Because uh, about 25% of amyloblastic carcinoma uh, have reported to metastasize, usually to regional lymph nodes. So we should treat them with aggressive treatment. So the surgical resection with neck dissection and radiotherapy is the treatment for amyloblastic. The other type of odontogenic carcinomas is the primary intraosseous sequimal cell carcinoma. When I take a biopsy and send it to the uh, laboratory and he said to me this is a sequimal cell carcinoma how can I differentiate it from normal all, uh, oral sequimal cell carcinoma that metastasize to the bone or it is a primary intraosseous sequimal cell carcinoma a sequimal cell carcinoma of the bone how can I differentiate it if the sequimal cell carcinoma that we found it in the bone lack any continuity with the oral or enteral mucosa or occur in the absence of any primary carcinoma located elsewhere usually we call them primary intraosseous sequimal cell carcinoma 
They are not the normal squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, these cases are assumed to arise from the odontogenic epithelium. They have three subcategories, either arising de novo, as we said, they arise primarily without any previous lesion, or arising from pre-existing odontogenic cyst, and those arising from pre-existing benign odontogenic neoplasm. They may be seen in elderly patients, uh, mostly arise in the posterior mandible area, as we see from this radiograph, like I said in the previous lecture, Mintigini X-ray, I am patient, ينطيني, uh, هذا, when, ممكن, يعني ليش إحنا دا نقول شوفه بيجي عمر أكثر شوفه بيجي عمر أكثر على مود أنت من تشوف من تيجي كيس من تشوف صورة من تشوف هذه عندك باك جراوند على الأيج الأفريج أيج اللي ممكن يصير بي هذا التيومر تقدر تحط ديفرنشيال دايجروس دايجنوسس للتيومرز اللي تصير بهالأيج فمن نقول elderly patient وأنا هنا أنا دا أشوف البيشنت تقريبا extracted most of his teeth يجيب بالي the primary intraosseous squamous cell carcinoma which is usually occur in the posterior area of the mandible like we see here usually present as a painless sorry usually present as a painful swelling this is the contrast between malignant and benign odontogenic tumor. The benign, like we said, they usually asymptomatic, have no pain. But when we enter to the malignant uh, subdivision, we uh, we see the pain is the, the usual manifestation. Sorry, or usual complaint of the patient. So we the clinically, it appears as a painful swelling. Radiographically, it appears as a radiolucent region, lesion with poorly defined diffused irregular borders like we see here I can't see I can't see where the bone it's totally eats the angle of the mandible so what is the treatment for this type of uh, carcinoma while this uh, carcinoma usually contained within the jaw they are usually uh, have more favorable uh, prognosis than the, uh, the ones that extend to the soft tissue. So, composite resection usually the preferred treatment with, radio, with or without radiotherapy or chemotherapy. So, we take the... Why we, ta uh, why we uh, choose the composite? Because usually it's not... Sometimes it's not defined, uh, not confined. We may see uh, it invade the gum or invade the, the soft tissue adjacent to it. So the composite uh, resection, which means resection of the bone with the soft tissue around it. And followed by radiotherapy and or chemotherapy. As we the other type of carcinomas is sclerosing odontogenic Carcinoma. Uh, they are defined as a primary intraosseous carcinoma of the jaw. They are usually locally aggressive with infiltrative uh, nature in growth. Most commonly seen in the middle aged uh, patient with a slight male predilection, mostly seen in the mandible, like we see here. This is the lesion mostly seen in the mandible. Uh, the patient usually complains from swelling, pain, or paresthesia. In the radiograph, it appears as ill-defined radiolucent mass with mixed radioopic areas. From its name, sclerosing. I bali معناها اكو calcification ممكن اشوف. هاي الاريا اني دا اشوف انا حتى هذا هذه هنا انا اريا اوف كالسيفيكيشن اريا اوف كالسيفيكيشن هذا كله هو الليجن الا اريد يو ال ديفايند اي كانت سي ا بروبر بوردر فور ذيس ليجن ال ديفايند راديو يوسنت اريا ويز راديو اوباسيتيز ذا تريتمنت فور ذيس 
type of carcinoma is usually resection with at least 5 mm margin in combination with periodic follow-up. So re resection with a margin of at least 5 mm uh, almost all the tumor whether they are benign or malignant I ask the patient I put the patient under a follow-up I can't resect or curate or excise the tumor and to tell the patient go away you you are uh, completely cured no I must uh, put in my mind the recurrence rate put in my mind the malignant transformation the malignant metastasis and put the patient uh, having a tumor whether it is odontogenic or non-odontogenic under a proper period of follow-up to make sure there is no recurrence to make sure there is no rec uh, no metastasis or any malignant transformation and make sure that you completely excised the lesion you have no, uh, not left any uh, part of the lesion the other type of odontogenic carcinomas is the clear cell odontogenic uh, carcinoma they are unusual malignant tumor of supposed odontogenic origin usually from the dental lamina Normally, under uh, histological examination, uh, the odontogenic uh, epithelial cells uh, shows a clear cytoplasm. We must differentiate a clear cell odontogenic carcinoma from a metastatic deposit in the jaw from malignancies that occur elsewhere, like renal, lung, or thyroid carcinomas, which may also may exhibit the clear cells. So we must differentiate them. Uh, differentiate the lesion is it a metastatic uh, lesion from uh, a tumor elsewhere that have a clear cell or is it a true clear cell odontogenic carcinoma this is tumor usually a low grade malignancy uh, with a local destructive growth and invasion of the medullary bone nerves lymphatics as well as regional lymph nodes and uh, exhibit a distance metastasis usually to the lung and bone Mostly seen in females or than, than 60 years old, mostly in the mandible, like we see here, usually appear as rapidly growing intraosseous lesion. In the x-ray, appear as a varyingly well-defined radiolucency, often associated with loosening teeth. These teeth are floating in the tumor, so they, are, they appear mobile. They, are, they have no bone support. The treatment for this type of uh, carcinoma, because this is, un, uh, this is an unpredictable tumor and have a high recurrence rate, so a definitive resection uh, rec is required once diagnosed. So a simple excision is uh, followed by uh, local recurrence and the propensity to metastasize. So I must do resection, not only simple excision. With simple excision, we have high recurrence rate and a propensity to metastasize. The final type of odontogenic carcinomas is the ghost cell odontogenic carcinoma. It is an uncommon malignant epithelial odontogenic neoplasm. It is considered the malignant counterpart of the calcifying cysting odontogenic tumor which came from the calcifying odontogenic tumor and combines features of that tumor with the presence of ghost cells like we say ghost cells they are cells that lost their nuclei but have but preserved their shape and some uh, so sometimes we see this plastic dentine and uh, we see features of a clinical and cytological features. We see some features of malignancy. Mostly seen uh, in the fourth decay, predominantly in males. The most common site is in the maxilla. The patient present with a painful swelling with uh, local paresthesia and loosening of the teeth. Usually it is a poorly defined radial UCNC mixed with radio opacity 
like we see here, poorly defined radial use in C with mixed radio opacity. The treatment, the recommended treatment for this type of lesion is wide surgical excision with a clear surgical margin about 5 millimeters all of normal bone or around the lesion. Local and uh, local regional and distant metastases are rare in this case of carcinoma. The other type of malignant odontogenic tumors are the odontogenic sarcomas. The odontogenic sarcomas are a low-grade malignant connective tissue tumors. They are account for less than 5% of all sarcomas of the oral and maxillofacial region. They are um, a mixed odontogenic tumor in which the epithelial component is benign, while the proliferative mesenchymal component is the malignant one. So when I say sarcoma, which means the connective tissue or the mesenchymal component usually is the malignant. I guess the carcinoma. The carcinoma, which is epithelial, is the malignant. Here, in the sarcoma, the mesenchymal or the connective tissue is the malignant part. An example for odontogenic sarcoma is the amyloblastic fibrosarcoma. It is a malignant odontogenic tumor characterized uh, by a combination of benign epithelium and malignant mesenchymal component. It may arise as a de novo tumor without any uh, a tumor that exists without any previous lesion or as a result of malignant trans uh, transformation of amyloblastic fibroma within Maginna. بالاميلوبلاستيك فايبروما عندها القابلية أنه تتحول إلى أميلوبلاستيك فايبروساركوما So, any case of أميلوبلاستيك فايبروساركوما when diagnosed should be treated immediately without delay to avoid the chance of uh, transform into a فايبروساركوما Usually arise in the mandible in teenagers and young patient The mandible is the most common site like we see here, the mandible is the most common site. The, the clinical uh, presentation is usually a painful facial mass. This is the tumor, a painful facial mass. This is the tumor. This is a painful facial mass. In the radiograph, the tumor is a destruct have a destructive uh, quality, like we see here. It's almost completely destruct the mandible. We see we don't see any bone here. Here. So radiographically, it appears as a destructive localized radiolucent tumors with ill-defined border, with ill-defined border. The treatment for this type of malignancy is uh, wide resection surgery with the combination of chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Also, as we said, long-term follow-up for the patient is essential, especially in the cases of amyloblastic fibroma and odontogenic sarcoma. Other entities uh, such as amyloblastic fibroadontosarcoma or fibroadontosarcoma also included in the odontogenic uh, sarcoma uh, but they have a dentine or enamel tissue present uh, in addition to the malignant mesic. The final type of malignant odontogenic tumors are uh, the odontogenic carcinosarcomas. From their name, the odontogenic carcinosarcomas, they are extremely rare, rare malignant tumors. They are a mixture of odontogenic carcinoma and sarcoma, in which both the epithelial and mesenchymal components show a malignant activity. Odontogenic carcinoma may arise from any pre-existing tumors, such as amyloblastoma, 
أميلا بلاستيك فايبراما أميلا بلاستيك فايبرا ساركوما and أوستيو ساركوما Clinically, the tumor represent uh, present as an aggressive recurrent metastasis uh, presented with aggressive recurrent and metastasizing features. The treatment is surgical resection with uh, adjuvant therapy may be necessary like uh, radiotherapy or chemotherapy. Like we see here, it is poorly defined radiolucent with destructive ability. This is, uh, we see here, perforation of the cortical plate and no lower border of the mandible. This is an indication of its destructive nature. So, the treatment of this malignancy is surgical resection. By the end of this lecture, we finish the subject odontogenic tumors. In the next lecture, we will discuss non-odontogenic tumors. Thank you.